Hello? Is it all right with the sound now? Okay, I'll start then. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. My name is Maxim. Uh, I'm from Moscow. I'm pleased to welcome dear colleagues on this conference and uh, grateful for the opportunity to make a report. In my report, I represent not only myself, but also my senior colleague and teacher, Gennady Labastov, a close friend and follower of Evald Ilyenkov. Because he was unfortunately unable to attend, I'll try to stay within the time limit. Together with Natalia Listratenko, who made an interesting presentation on subjectivity yesterday, and with Andrei Maidansky, who you know, I represent here the Russian Philosophical Society, Dialectics and Culture, which sends greetings and congratulations to all those who are interested in Ilyenkov's legacy. This society was founded after Ilyenkov's death by his close friends and students. Every year, usually in February or March, we hold an international theoretical conference called Ilyenkov Readings. On behalf of this society and personally on behalf of its president, Gennady Lobastov, I happily invite everyone to participate in the upcoming conference in 2023. This is a great opportunity to establish the intersubjective dialogue that Marek Szemek, Polish thinker and colleague of Ilyenkov, wrote about and which already emerged yesterday on several different topics. I mean, Andy, Isabel, Janice, Georgie, and so on. We all need dialogue today. Cooperation, at least in the field of theory, especially when such crazy things are happening in the world. I have no doubt that such cooperation is possible, and I am happy to see participants from all over the world, especially my dear friend Sergei Alushkin from Ukraine. A few words about Labastov's article first. There is no point in retelling it. It should certainly be read, and I would recommend everyone to become acquainted with the thoughts of this great thinker. I am not exaggerating when I say that Gennady Labastov is the most outstanding student of Ilyenkov. Don't believe me, you can see this for yourself. The main thought of his article stresses the need to study Ilyenkov's work in depth in the context of classical philosophical thought from Parmenides to Hegel as a continuation of this very classical line. This study is essential to understanding the theoretical heights to which Marx, Lenin, and Ilyenkov had climbed and how and why we must fight the positivist way of thinking today. The notion of the ideal, the notion of truth, the notion of the notion itself needs to be understood on the basis of the best achievements of philosophy, which Ilyenkov regarded as a science of thinking with its keyword to pass. The principle of identity, not only unity, but identity of thinking and being. Lebastov wrote, if one doesn't see here the reality of the ideal as the principle of man's social production of himself, if one doesn't see the division of labor, the emergence of property and its division, then idols easily turn into ideals and the stable form of idols into truths. If it is easy to understand that it is also easy to turn dialectic into idol and the less intelligence, the stronger the idols and their march through history doesn't confuse the mind because they grow up of the same foundation. foundations. Next, as far as my own topic is concerned, I have elaborated all the points of my report in the main text, which I hope at least some people have read. I understand that it may have been difficult due to its length. I will therefore highlight just some of the key points and explain them in order to make my position clear, even to those who have not read the text. My speech focuses on the problem of radical negativity and how it stands up in Marxist theory. In short, this situation is as follows. The failure of the first large-scale attempt to transform society in the 20th century has caused a kind of post-traumatic syndrome in left-wing intellectuals. This leads to attempts to get answers to the cursed old, old questions in some other way than was done before. Hence the demand to supplement Marxism with psychoanalysis, existentialism, structuralism, and 
God knows what else. Instead of mastering the Hegelian dialectical method to understand how to solve a problem while staying within the logic of monism, as Ilyankov did with no doubt. Mo modern theorists start trying to solve theoretical questions on a completely unsuitable ground, alien to this theory. This is usually presented as a creative development of a theory, but in fact, it is a rude eclecticism. This is clearly seen in the denial of totality, the most important Hegelian category. category. This denial can be easily traced in the thesis of Lacan, Deleuze, Alain Badiou, and Slavoj Žižek, who recently wrote a critical article about Ilyenkov, in which explicitly states that Ilyenkov's mistake, wrote Žižek, resides in his very starting point. In a naive, realist way, he presupposes reality as a whole, regulated by the necessary of progress and its reverse. Within this pre-modern space of a complete and self-regulating cosmos, radical negativity can only appear as a total self-destruction. The way out of this deadlock is to abandon the starting point and to admit that there is no reality as a self-regulated whole, that reality is in itself cracked, incomplete, known all, traversed by radical antagonism. Zizek wrote, of course, about uh, cosmology of spirit, Ilyenkov's famous work. It is this statement that is the next logical step in the chain of development of the line of discontinuity from the abstract unity, the absolute identity of Schelling, of which Janis spoke yesterday in the question about Goethe and Romanticism, to the totality of Hegel, which is the unity of unity and difference. Already Gilles Deleuze claims to overcome this principle in his notion of pure difference, free of identity. This is the problem Zizek highlights. Totality remains the bearing element, the main principle which Hegel does not justify, but on which the entire edifice of Hegel's system of thought rests. I think also that the problem of totality is closely linked to the questions about germ cells that Andy Blunden uh, mentioned in his report. Ilyenkov insists that there is only one germ cell for the object under study, and that the different stages of its development show the diversity of definition of the object, represent that very concrete as unity in diversity. This means that for the Ilyenkov theoretical line to be carried out quite consistently, the abstractness of the category totality needs to be removed to show the mediation within it itself. This could be done by developing the opposite logical category, the own other of totality. This own other is not randomly chosen. It crystallizes in the theory as an answer to very complicated problems. The problem is this. The dialectical form of development identified by Hegel somehow fails. Universal logical development is irreplaceable, but it can stall when faced with an obstacle. Here, I mean the discontinuity of development cycles at every point, the constant incompleteness, the failure of these cycles, the inaccessibility of reaching a new turn of development. All this is a real problem for Hegelian dialectics, which also explains all the diverse empirical setbacks and failures of social transforming activity. The universal attitude of fragmentation is an essential characteristic of contemporary society. It is what should be called Fractality, in other words, total fragmentation or the fragmentation of totality, its absolute rupture. Fractality is usually understood as self-similarity. These fancy pictures on the screen, you know, but as a logical category, which forms an own other for category of totality and occupies an exceptional place in Hegel's system of logic. It has exactly this sense, absolute rupture of the whole. The basic definitions and problems related to the deduction of this notion, its relation to problems of theoretical mathematics, cybernetics, and political economy, its place in the categorical movement of Hegel's logic, I have outlined, outlined partly in the main text and partly in the forthcoming book. I will only add the following, which is of crucial importance. The fractal is a total rupture, but given birth to a new totality at each point of split. A consistent solution to the problem of radical negativity in a monistic way is possible through the intervention of the ideal, bringing the reason 
into development. The ideal, the thinking subject is understood, unlike Zizek, as a necessary product of the development of universal matter arising from the needs of substance itself, without which at a certain stage, this development is hindered, stalled, becomes impossible. The fractal in which, speaking in the words of Hegel, spirit finds itself in an, its absolute rupture is the totality of the human self, which has become a universally evolved person, which has finally conquered alienation by identifying itself with world substance through the coincidence of objective laws of development. Here also lies the solution to the contradiction of totalitarianism and individualism, where history achieves its ultimate goal, restoring the lost identity of mine and ours to the unity, which is mediated by the long history of their rupture and moves away from the relationship of domination and subordination to the genuine relationship of person to person. Thank you for your attention. I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Maxim. Okay, um, we can um, start with a question from Georgie online. Uh, yes, um, hello, can you hear me well? Uh -huh. uh, uh, well, um, thank you very much, Maxim, for this uh, uh, very interesting uh, presentation. I agree with you on uh, a lot of points, but I wanted to kind of ask you this question. Your interpretation of... Uh, totality speaks to me on um, on kind of many levels because I was thinking also of this like the second half of 20th century French anti-Hegelianism and this critique of totality and then in relation to that Ilyenkov's uh, conception of the universal uh, of uh, the Seopshi as precisely as, as, a, as a totality that rests on difference rather than identity and there he talks about uh, how it is precisely the difference that pushes different particulars to each other, while uh, same uh, individuals would not have this uh, sort of relation of attraction uh, because uh, they cannot contribute anything to each other. And recently, uh, a book I don't think I don't know if it came out already or not, but it's Todd McGowan's book on um, on Hegel. And uh, he basically presents universal or universalism not as something that is being imposed on the particulars in a violent manner, but uh, as something that is lacking. And this universal as the lack is precisely what animates and uh, pushes all the individuals into a movement, which for me, uh, notwithstanding the psychoanalytical connotation of this, is sounds a lot like Ilengo and a lot like because Ilengo talks about like the same individuals if they come together is just a doubling of solitude right he says a doubling of solitude rather than an actual uh, universe anyway yeah that was kind of my question thank you very much again for your presentation uh, thank you for a question I uh, hope that I get it right um, I don't think that um, totality um, can be uh, grounded on the difference, uh, like uh, in postmodern thought. Uh, I think uh, there are a lot more things uh, we have to uh, say about that, uh, but there is a quite different uh, topic. I recommend the um, book of uh, uh, Ilyenkov's friend, Mm, Valery Basenko, uh, in original, it uh, called uh, Universal Theory of Development. Uh, I think uh, this point I'll uh, try to outline uh, in the report mm, uh, quite explicitly present there in this book. Uh, maybe this book um, helps you uh, in, to answer this uh, question. Thank you very much. Can you just repeat the name? I'm, I'm going to note it down. Uh, I'll write it. Uh, okay, thank you. Type it into the chat. Um, just wanted to make a quick point and then I'll um, pass to Mikhail. Um, yeah, so just, just to push back a bit, if I were um, to think about what a Zizekian might say, I think um, one point there is that for um, the kind of people who, who, who follow Zizek, um, the point is the, the their, their critique is that um, for people like Ilyenkov, um, sublation 
alpha bomb is something that's positive and constructive. And so for them, it's something destructive. Um, you, you, kind of, yeah, you, 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 you destroy those things. And then if, if, what, if what you're focusing on is a resolving of contradictions, overcoming of alienation, then the, the problem is that it, it's a kind of like a, um, everything is great kind of um, picture of the universe that you- Yeah, uh, if, if, I, if I get it right, uh, the um, uh, conception of uh, fractality, yeah, uh, it's, um, it is a, it is the way uh, to solve the problem uh, that you highlight, uh, that you highlight, uh, sorry for my <laughs> English. Uh, uh, the problem is to uh, unite the free will and objective laws. Yeah, uh, I, I think your question is about that. Uh, I think the way, um, not so logical, theoretical way of thinking uh, presented by uh, Slavoj Žižek uh, is not a solution, uh, in fact. Uh, it is a Не уверен, как, <laughs> а, а, как это будет по-английски. По it is a uh, theoretical... Mm -hmm. One second. Скажи по-русски. Костыль. Uh, oh, yeah. um, uh, crutch. Theoretical uh, crutch. Uh, instead of, instead of uh, solution. He uses uh, the, the psychoanalysis. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, it is not quite a monistic Marxist way uh, of thinking. It is, uh, in my opinion, a gnosological defect. Thank you. Um, and over to Mikhail. Uh, thank you, Maxim. Thank you for your report. And maybe a strange question, uh, at least partly. Uh, did uh, Zizek, uh, <clears throat> write anything about Ilyenkov or at least uh, mentioned uh, him in any paper? Yeah, of course. Uh, he wrote um, in the magazine, uh, the short article about uh, Ilyenkov. I think uh, it was after uh, translating the cosmology of spirit uh, into the English. Uh, and uh, the article about uh, the transcendental uh, in Marxism, where uh, Zizek look at, at the Lukic position, Adorno and uh, Ilyenkov. Uh, I was uh, citing uh, the Zizek in my report. Yeah, uh, th there is a, um, an article about Ilyenkov and uh, cosmology of spirit. Okay, thank you. And on to Andy. Oh, thanks, Maxim. Um, I have to respond to the comments you made in that um, you really have to be a philosopher, Maxim, to say something like there can only be one germ cell. What is this germ cell? What is it? God? What's, what is this one germ cell out of which everything is unfolded? For Hegel, uh, this is the absolute idea in common. But I think uh, Hegel, um, not always, but usually uh, understood uh, abstractly. Uh, and we uh, think with um, schemes uh, instead of uh, understood and study uh, Hegelian dialectics in depth, like Ilyenkov. But I think, sorry, Maxim, but it's the opposite what you're saying. I mean, Hegel never claimed that the absolute idea was um, the germ cell. That's the outcome. That's you know the end. That's God. But but what is the germ cell out of which it arises? I is, think. Is, I mean, is, yeah. is it the commodity? Is that the only germ cell there is in the world? The commodity. I think in the capital, uh, yes, this is no, but uh, not in capital. You said there's only one germ cell. Full stop. So I want only to know one what the germ okay. cell is. I understand. Uh, thank you. Uh, only one germ cell 
for the object of study. I, I stressed that. So is there only one object of study? No. Do objects interact with one another? come independently in the external world and interact with one another? Theory is a monistic theory of the object. In the uh, case of capital, uh, the object of study is uh, society at uh, his total. In yeah, case of... In case of you see, it's a very idealistic picture to think that capital uh, arises out of a single relation, that no new concept arises between the exchange of commodity and the formation of modern finance and monopoly capitalism. No new concepts, you know, no new relation. You know, you don't have the transformation of, of CMC, the sale of a commodity for in order to live, into uh, uh, buying in order to sell at a profit. There's, you don't see a new germ cell in MC M dash, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, imagine teaching mathematics that, you know, you have a, a germ cell in the, the, the cardinal number of a set learning to count and that's it, that all of mathematics is supposed to be unfolded out of a single germ cell, right? So concrete world has many germ cells you know, the, the object isn't just God and contemplating God. You know, it's a uh, concrete world. And, of course, Elienkov, uh explained out loud, the, the, you know, drew out this idea of germ cell from Hegel's encyclopedia. Um, but that doesn't mean that having outlined the method, it just re remains at the level of methodology and, and philosophy. You have to engage with the world which has many different forms of activity in us that interact with one another, for example, take over one another, cooperate, you know, absorb one another. Okay, and um, one last... If, 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 Can I answer this comment? Yeah. On, yeah, thank you, Andy. And uh, I think there is a lot more uh, to be said. And uh, there is a key thesis to discuss about John, uh, John Sell, uh, I think. But um, you mentioned maths, mathematics. But for Hegel, uh, every science is uh, an applied logic. And uh, I think mathematics as a theoretical system is uh, only waiting to be built like a, uh, an applied logic. And uh, so, uh, in opinion of Ilyenkov, uh, capital is a, uh, an applied logic itself, and uh, it it is uh, development um, from this germ cell commodity. But okay, this is for the future discussion. Thanks, and Yanis with the final comments. Hello. Um... A brief comment. Uh, I would like to firstly to congratulate Maxim, and uh, my comment uh, has to do uh, exactly in accordance with the critique of Maxim in the postmodern philosophies, which, uh, con which affirm the difference, which uh, in the difference as the main uh, aspect. And to say that um, it is also important, in accordance with Marxism, with the Maxim, with the argument of Maxim, exactly, to, to see the argumentation about the relation between the universal the particular and the concrete and the difference of the identity exactly in the study of the division of labor because philosophy uh the, the theoretical debate of in the, in, the, in the level of the philosophy has its ground in the human relations as they are defined in the division of labor and the overwhelming of the this kind of um, opposition between universality and uh, individuality lies, in my opinion, in my opinion uh, in the division of, la of labor, essentially the uh, distinction between manual repetitive labor and intellectual creative labor. And uh, in this context, the works, for example, of Radovan Richter, for example, in Czech Republic, the whole debate 
uh, about the creative labor is very important in order to understand to um, to do a further critique of this uh, philosophy of difference. That's what uh, I want to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maxim. Thank you, Janis. Uh, just a short answer. Uh, I think that uh, what I'm talking about, this is exactly what uh, Labastov writes about. And I uh, completely agree with him. The root of division is in the division of labor, with which, uh, as we know, after Marx, uh, with which the man himself is divided. So I agree with your comment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maxim. Thanks.